Hello and welcome to Clea's World. I am Clea and today I would like to share with you more of the information I've received during my last BQH hypnosis session. I'll be reading from a transcript of the session and when I refer to Lorraine, I'm speaking to my practitioner who's asking me questions I've prepared in advance of the session. And when I refer to me, I'm speaking about Source in this specific session who was a surprise guest during the session I generally I've, I've always spoken with the 25th before in all my previous sessions, so this was new. All right, I am going to be covering some dreams that I've had, because I know many of you are interested in dream interpretation. Obviously, these are dreams that pertain and have a universal message, so pertain to all of us who are left here at this point, uh, also because there is one higher self at the end of the day, a source tells us there's only me. And therefore, uh, these dreams just uh, is another way that I got information. So I'd like to share them with you. So here we go. This is Lorraine reading. This is a dream from September 3rd. I was living in Russia as an expat outsider. I had a fun life hanging out with people at all levels of society who really liked me. I think I was an artist and I felt happy. Then this guy who was at the head of one branch of the police took a shining to me. I saw him through the window of my small flat looking at me and I liked him. He looked nice, but this was before I realized who he was since I wanted nothing to do with the head of a police branch because I knew he was likely not clean, especially in Russia. However, right after that, the head of all police branches started liking me and I had no choice but to accept the first guy, figuring that the second guy was much, much worse. And then now I needed protection if I wanted to get away with rejecting the head of all the police since this was a dangerous thing to do. I felt like I had to compromise and that I was not as free as I had been. There was an older woman on our floor where there were many small flats like mine. She was in charge of the floor of keeping order and keeping an eye on people. She reported things, so I was happy that she liked me. She treated me nicely and I had no issues with her. Suddenly, something must have happened, maybe because of this top guy liking me and me not wanting to be with him and he became unsafe for me to stay. It's as if the good times had come to an end because of something outside of my control. They told me to pack up because I had to leave. I packed a bag and went outside. There were two buses full of people waiting. One was called Strike 10, which was supposed to be a nice name that made people feel good. And I was told that the other was for people who had wireless service on their telephone. This made me think that the first bus was for people who didn't have wireless, and I laughed at that. They also told us that the wireless bus was going to leave first and the strike 10 bus was going to leave at some point after the first bus, but there was no schedule. So it might be that the first bus will leave within a couple of hours and the other bus many hours after the first. The first guy who liked me was already on the wireless bus waiting for me. I climbed on the bus with a certain sense of urgency, but it looked like we were not leaving anytime soon. So I went back into the flat to continue packing. Then I came out again with a suitcase, but when they asked me if I was ready, I realized I'd not packed anything but my clothes. So I still had many things to pack. And since we were still waiting, I had time to do so. I went back inside again and I realized that my daughter and my cat were still there. I had left them and only taken my suitcase because I thought we were in a hurry, but I told myself I could not leave without them and I could take everything with me. It would be hard to travel with Tommy because he wouldn't like being in a crate, but I was not going to leave him behind. Then I went back to the bus again, and it's as if something had happened, and there had been a change in regime which caused a change in plans. This woman approached me and told me that I was going to be able to stay, but that the only way I would be spared, as in not killed, was if I accepted to be a spy. I would have a new identity, and I would have to start over. The guy who liked me, who was not clean, as in not of the light, was going to be taken care of and removed from my life. As she said that, a beautiful tall woman on the bus who was sitting across from him, stood up, approached him, and offered him some peas. He thought she liked him and ate them without suspecting anything. I watched him, knowing that he was being poisoned, and eventually he started coughing. I got off the bus, and I think that my boyfriend was with me because there was a new guy with me out of the group on the bus, and I was comfortable with him. He was there to support me. As soon as I got off the bus, the wireless bus disappeared as if it had been vaporized. I thought that the wireless bus was the best bus among the two because it was going to leave first, but it told me that instead the Strike 10 bus was the best, hence the name, which referenced a perfect score in some kind of sport. 
I went back inside the building. And when I got to my floor, the supervisor lady approached me as if she had never seen me before and called me Natalia, which was to be my new name. She asked me about my phone as if she wanted to take it from me so I couldn't call anyone without them knowing. I told her that they had given me one, a black flip phone that was very low tech, but that I didn't even know the password. She seemed satisfied with the answer. And since I couldn't use it without the password, she let me keep it. I was thinking to myself that now I would have access to the highest echelons of society through their contacts, but that I didn't like that. I'd always picked who I wanted to be friends with, and I didn't want to have access to all these high-level people who were not of the light. But since my job was to spy on them, this was going to be my lot. I didn't like the idea of being a spy because I had been a free agent before, and now I had no freedom. I was still in Russia, but it was not nearly as fun as before. And I know this sounds like an action movie. I don't know if you guys get these very happening dreams. But my main question about this dream was, first of all, of course, what does this all mean? But also in particular, I thought it had been my choice to stay past the takedown. But in this dream, it seems that I had no choice. And obviously this relates to all of us. I mean, we've been told that it's our choice to stay, but this dream seems to suggest that, no, it wasn't really our choice. So that's what I wanted to understand. Not only we now know that we are Neo and can control our reality, but in the dream, it looks like after the takedown, I was actually a much diminished version of myself and much less free than before. On top of this, I was now forced to hobnob with the dark and I had a new identity that was imposed on me by greater forces. Lastly, what was the meaning of number 10? Me. Yeah, so we'll say the part about in the dream, it seems that I did not choose to stay past the takedown even though I know that, or I've been told by 25th that I chose to stay. Those of us, all of us who have stayed behind have chosen to stay, which of course is true. Now, in the dream, she did choose to stay because the fact is she could have chosen to go with that guy on the bus and stay with him. That was 3D reality. It was the people leaving, the people that have left during the takedown, during the original takedown timeline. And she could have gone with him. And that was again, very 3D, right? This was the head of a police branch, but she chose not to do that. And now what was her role after these people had left to be a spy? What does that mean? That she's carrying information, which is exactly what she's doing. She's a messenger basically. But now she's saying, well, but I don't like it. I don't feel like I have my freedom. I felt a lot freer before because I could do whatever I wanted. Whereas now I'm forced to do certain things. And this is the experience from an emotional perspective. But in reality, we know very well, there was no freedom before in the sense that it was the same thing, in the sense that we were pretending before. It's just that now we're not pretending anymore. Now I know what is going on and I don't really want to do this or this is hard to do. Now, can I do it well? Yes, that's why you know they've chosen me to do this. Not only, now I have to hobnob or connect with people that I don't really want to connect with, with the dark. And of course, what have we done during this entire period of time? We have really connected with the dark. Isn't that what we have done? And finally realize that, yeah, we were pretending before that we are different people, but we are one and the same. So this is the explanation to everything. The fact that she was thinking, oh, I thought we were in a hurry and I was even going to leave my daughter and cat behind, which of course would never happen in real life. So now she's thinking, oh, I have time. They're still here with me. So that's fine. I will take them with me. Of course, there is her boyfriend showing up because he's been there to support her. So yeah, I mean, the rest we think is pretty straightforward. Obviously the building is this planet and she was living in her little unit. And of course there was a lady in charge of telling everybody what to do, but she said a happy life. She was friendly with a person. So of course she got to do whatever she wanted to do, which has been pretty much her experience on this planet. And all of a sudden now we run into, you know, we're going to have to make compromises. This is what we did here, right? We made compromises on this planet. Nothing was ever the ultimate in freedom and excitement. It was always something that was okay, passable. The least bad choice, really. is like you hold your nose, you know, so you don't really smell what you're dealing with. So the number 10 really didn't mean anything. 10 was just, it was just symbolizing completion in that sense. It was the perfect score. So we're going to leave on strike 10. So it doesn't mean 10 is in October or it's going to happen at 10 o'clock. We're already sad. This is not how these numbers translate in the matrix or in our perceived reality. It's more a matter of what do they mean? What do they symbolize? What do they represent? In this case, 10 means like we're done. What is the end, right? 10 is a round number, like we're almost there. And in the meantime, this work is being done. 
So yeah, the main thing for Clea here was like, does that mean anything? And I thought that I'd chosen to stay. She did choose to stay. She could have been on the first bus that disappeared, but she wasn't. So there's still a bus of people that are still behind waiting. And she just started a new mission after the takedown. And that's us on the bus. That's not leaving yet. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm aware. I'm aware we're still waiting. <laughs> Lorraine. Okay, so this is a dream from September 4th. I was a child and I was in a house with many other children and a couple of adults. We were like a family, but we were not related by blood as if this couple had taken us in. We didn't have a luxurious life, but we were fine. And there was relief because no matter what, time was passing and we were growing up. And even though we're not going to become anyone great, we we're going to be able to survive on our own. I woke up, but when I went back to sleep, I dreamed that I was still in this house and everyone was out. I was left with Superman and he showed me around the property. He was supposed to be a good guy and seemed friendly. We walked outside and he showed me that there was another house next to ours and that we had kind of taken it over because it had been abandoned by the neighbors. I wanted to go in, but it was locked. And I found it strange we had never gone in since it was technically ours now. There was something magical about it, like the doors didn't quite work the way they were supposed to. A Superman minimized and dragged me away as if he didn't want me to investigate. So I started thinking he was hiding something and was not a good guy after all. Inside our house, he had also been hiding things from me, as if he didn't want me to finish the rehab project I was working on. But I didn't want him to know I suspected him, so I went along without complaining. We then found ourselves in the middle of a village, and I tried to hide inside a restaurant when he wasn't looking, because I wanted to get away from him. It wasn't easy, and I was very anxious, but eventually I managed to hide from him. Me. Yeah, so basically that dream had to do with, there was Superman, and again, Superman was a hero. He was supposed to be a great person, but meanwhile, he had secrets. He was not 100% good. Again, this idea of good and bad, right? We are dark and light, and people took care of me, so I was not independent. And at the same time, I was looking forward to becoming independent as I grew up. It's a little bit like, again, the reality, how we have lived through reality here, which is, hasn't been everything we wanted, but we hold hope that things would have gotten better. Things will get better. And so again, meanwhile, they leave me with this individual, this character, Superman, where I would think, oh, this is great. But meanwhile, I'm already very suspicious of him because again, the people that have held a special status here have always been dark, on the side of the dark mostly. And we know that. So it's not just a matter of appearances. There is a part about the door being magical, of course, because the house is magic. That's symbolizing new earth, right? So this individual, this character is trying to keep me away from going, from seeing the truth, from seeing everything. So there is this greater force that is controlling me again, which is actually the theme from the previous dream where we're seeing there are these outside forces controlling us, which of course is not true. But what matters here is that, yeah, I was trying to get away from him. Meaning I realized I don't want to be controlled and I don't like this reality anymore. I just want to get away from it. So that's what this was referencing. Lorraine, thank you. Okay, this next dream is from September 6th. I was working on a house. It was huge, more like a palace, and it needed a lot of work. A contractor was there who was upset because I'd used my boyfriend too much, and he felt like he could have made more money if I used him more. I'd already paid him for the work he had done for me a few days prior, and I'd given him $25 extra. I wanted to appease him, so I told him that my boyfriend hadn't done that much work. He just lived there, so he was there all the time but there hadn't been that much work to do. In fact, the contractor himself had done a lot of it. And not only I paid him, but I also tipped him. For some reason, I really wanted to appease him, even though I wouldn't need him anymore after this. Me. Yeah, let's just comment on this. We're trying to keep reality as it is. We're trying to appease him, even though we don't need this anymore. That's what this means. So of course, construction, the building is the planet. So what we're doing here is we're always walking on eggshells trying not to upset the balance. That's what the first part of this dream was referencing. Lorraine, the contractor come down and seemed okay, but there was an evil God in the house who was very angry with me. Perhaps I'd wanted to appease the contractor because he seemed to feed off of the evil God and I wanted to remove allies from the God's side. Me, yeah, so again, we're talking about the dark here and there was this evil at large. And of course, using our friends to cause mayhem because you know it affects us, right? We have been affected. And there was this evil in the house, wasn't there? This evil God. Again, the house was the planet. So of course, there was this evil going on. 
Now, we know this darkness is inside all of us. However, we are taking down this planet because there has been a lot of darkness here. So absolutely, we are trying to appease. We are trying to compromise. We are trying to get along so we don't tip anything over. We don't upset anything in the balance here. But meanwhile, this is all very unpleasant and it's time to move on, really. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Lorraine, in the next scene, I was taking care of chores on my list as if it was a normal day. I had one last thing to do before my daughter and I could leave the place. I was tired and I wanted to stop and leave right away. But just like in real life, I had so little time that I had to use every minute to my advantage and not waste it just because I was tired. I got done and when we finally left, I realized that the evil God had sent someone to kill me. I didn't want to drive by myself for safety, but my mother was way behind me on the road as if she was coming from a different place, even though we were going to the same destination. And my brother was too far ahead for him to hear me if I called him. I would have loved to have their company, but I was by myself. So I sucked it up and got on the road with my daughter. Suddenly on the way, we found ourselves in a tunnel. From the other entrance in front of us, a figure appeared that looked initially all black due to the light behind or outside the tunnel, but that I quickly recognized to be the mutant girl from X-Men who changed his appearance. And I can't remember her name. I didn't even Google it. Whatever. If you guys have seen the movie. Anyway, this figure. She was coming to kill us and she was successful. She took us both out. This is my comment. This is the first time in my life I've had a dream where I died and even my daughter died. What is this about and what's going on with all these superheroes that are supposed to be good, but are actually dark, like Superman in yesterday's dream? Me. So actually, it's not died as in a bad thing, as in, oh my gosh, we're being killed. It's more like we are going to move through this tunnel and come out completely transformed. So this, you can almost take it as the tunnel to New Earth. We said a long time ago, not everybody's going to be using the actual tunnel, but this is what that meant. But basically, yes, my mother and brother are gone. So they're far away from me. They can't help me. So it's kind of me on my own with my daughter. And there's still stuff that we have to do. That's why we're behind. I had one more thing to do, which is what we're doing right now, all of us. But at the end of the day, yeah, I get killed, meaning that eventually I move on because the murder, being assassinated, didn't feel bad. Claire was mostly startled and said, what happened? They got us. Well, they got us because eventually this is going to end. Now it's going to be the darkness that gets us because you see the tunnel is dark. It's this black figure and it gets sent by the evil God, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to be the darkness that gets us, right? But why? Because we already said everything is dark. We are the ones that have this connotation of the dark being this negative entity. We have, of course, experienced an extremely unpleasant lack of polarity, really, like extreme polarity towards the darkness. That's why we have this, we have this connotation. We have this idea of the dark, which is completely excusable, completely justifiable. But at the same time, darkness is not evil per se. Darkness is just like the light. It's the game we play here, really. It doesn't mean anything. We said before, we could call ourselves the yellow and the green team. We don't have to call it the light and the dark team. So there's really nothing wrong with the darkness per se. And so this is what this dream was about. It's like now the dark, you know, this darkness is happening. So, of course, in Claire's mind, this is a bad thing and we get killed. But in reality, this is only referring to what is happening right now. Again, her mother and brother are gone and they can't help her. She's on her own with her daughter and she's trying to get out of here. And are we all? <laughs> all right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you, as always, for watching and I'll see you in the next one.